Apple now hosts 800,000 shows, the average length of podcasts is going down, and the rise of the news category. Welcome to the Richard Daly Podcast, bringing you a UK perspective on the latest news and developments from the world of podcasting and internet radio. Welcome to episode 41. I'm your host, Richard Daly. Each week, I curate and discuss the latest news in podcasting and internet radio with a focus on the smaller podcaster, radio host and DJ. There are now more than 800,000 podcasts available in Apple Podcasts. Daniel J. Lewis, who runs the My Podcast Review service, has created a new web page to track the growth of the podcast industry. The statistics page he has displays a running count of the total number of valid podcasts, as well as the total number of available episodes, which is currently more than 27.6 million. The page also shows the number of podcasts added and removed from Apple Podcasts each day. One interesting stat that Daniel is tracking is the number of active podcasts. This is an area that is discussed a lot. With it being so easy to start a podcast using services such as Anchor, many people are trying it out and giving up after recording one or just a few episodes. Along with other stats, Daniel's page shows a pie chart comparing active versus inactive podcasts. He defines active as any podcast that has published at least one episode in the last 90 days. As Daniel notes, inactive, of course, doesn't mean those shows are dead or pod-faded, as it will include shows that have come to an end naturally, or between seasons, or, mm, well, I quote, have an infrequent publishing schedule. You can find all this at mypodcastreviews.com forward slash stats. Now, Daniel is also launching the Podcast Industry Data Concierge Service. This aims to provide, for a fee, more custom data on the podcast industry by interrogating the data his team is collecting from Apple, such as a list of podcasts in a specific category with more than a certain number of reviews. This is of possible interest to bigger podcasters, but more likely advertisers and others in the industry. You'll find a link to these new services in the show notes at richarddaly.com forward slash 41. It reminds me that I really should revitalise my own podcasting statistics page. As someone who publishes his own news podcast, it's naturally an area of podcasting that I like to keep a close eye on. One of the growing trends in the space is the daily news podcast, and I've always wondered about how sustainable they really are. Questions like, can they have enough audience to be made profitable? Now, I don't mean mine. I've no intention of monetizing this podcast directly, even if I did manage to grow it to a reasonable size. I'm really thinking of general news podcasts. A new study from the Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism seems to reach the same conclusion. They say that the number of podcasts in the news category increased by 32% between January and October 2019. Now get this, that means almost 12,000 new podcasts in nine months in the news category. Now of course the news category is quite broad and podcasts are self-categorised by the podcaster. The report focuses on daily news podcasts. They identified about 60 daily news podcasts in the US, UK, Australia, France and Sweden, most of which have launched in the last 18 months. It's clear that the producers of these podcasts are putting a lot of money into them. Companies like The Guardian, The Economist and The New York Times have teams of people dedicated to creating these shows. The report says The New York Times has about 15 people dedicated to making The Daily and The Guardian's Today in Focus employs 10. Must be nice. So what do the economics of these podcasts look like? Well, I think this is a bit less clear. It's a very competitive market where I think there is a lack of differentiation. I suspect these shows are a long way off making a profit from the advertising they can attract. And I'm sure we'll see some contraction in the number of shows eventually. Do seek out more on this report. There are some interesting details on different categories and the numbers of news podcasts, basically categorised by length. Not much different from how we might categorise broadcast news shows on TV and radio. Apparently this podcast would fit into the News Roundup category. To show that there is hope for all of us, here's a feel-good story from a bedroom DJ. Gabriel Green from Cornwall in the UK has got a job as a Radio 1 DJ on the early breakfast show on New Year's Eve this year. BBC Radio 1 recently ran a competition where new DJs and presenters could win a chance to host a show on the station. Some 35 presenters have been chosen out of about a 1,000 entrants and they'll be covering all kinds of shows over the Christmas and the New Year period. The competition was aimed at anyone with some previous radio experience. That experience could be in community, hospital, student or local radio. And quite a few entrants apparently came, like Gabriel, from an internet radio background. Gabriel got his start in radio, launching a station for his school. What a great idea for finding new talent for the BBC. 
Let's hope they run this type of competition again soon. Something that James Cridland predicted for 2019 was that the average length of podcast episodes would get shorter. Rain News reports this week that James has been proved correct. In an in-depth guest piece for them, Dan Meisner, the head of strategy and audience development at Pacific Content, shows his analysis of nearly 19 million podcast episodes to work out the average length of an episode. Dan found that the average episode length was 41 minutes and 31 seconds. Now, this figure was almost two minutes shorter than the average length when he did the same calculation last year. The article takes this into much more depth, including excluding some outliers, and then looks at how the average length has changed since 2005. The graphs Dan presents show some interesting spikes in average length, which he attributes to a small number of podcasts with large numbers of short episodes being removed from Apple Podcasts. He also looks at average length by category, with gaming, wrestling and music-related podcasts being amongst the longest. The shortest podcast episodes tend to be in the business, education and children-focused categories. It's very interesting. Finally this week, there have been a few podcasts that have been made into TV shows, of course, but now Apple TV Plus has created a new fictional drama called Truth Be Told, which is centred around a true crime podcast which is investigating the case of a teenager convicted of murder. Truth Be Told is based on a novel, Are You Sleeping? by Kathleen Barber. If you've seen the show, let me know what you think. OK, so that's all the news from the Richard Daly podcast for this week. If you enjoyed the episode, do share it with a friend on Apple Podcasts. You can now also find this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, PodSearch and wherever else you listen to podcasts. If you visit my website at richarddaly.com, you'll find all of my social media links as well as the various ways you can subscribe to the show. The show notes for this episode are at richarddaly.com forward slash 41. As usual, please send me your questions or comments. And if there is a topic you'd like me to cover, then you can tweet me. As always, I really appreciate your feedback. Thanks for listening and I will see you on the next episode.